Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're going to take a look at scraps of wood. At what point are they just not worth keeping? What is trash and what do you save? Okay, before we get started, big caveat, this is what I do. I'm not saying this is what everyone should do. These are just the standards that I have. For everyone out there and what characteristics you have in your shop and how you work, uh, what you save is going to be very different from what I save. When I first got started, every little bit of wood that entered the shop was precious. Even the curls had their use, and I didn't want to get rid of them. It was all worth saving. But when your shop is only 10 foot by 10 foot, eventually, mm, something, it's gotta go. For the first year or so in this shop, I kind of had the standard that if I could imagine a use for it, then I kept it. If I couldn't imagine a use for it, then I got rid of it. Usually that meant about anything under the size of a basketball, I got rid of. Anything over the size of a basketball, I kept. And that worked out pretty well. But then I got some things that were really valuable. Like this. This is a piece of old growth Albany salvaged from a piano. The piano was over 100 years old. How old is this piece of wood? Man, I could use that for inlay. Oh, I can't get rid of that, but it's smaller than a basketball. And as things went on, my collection started to get more and more expensive with really cool pieces of cherry or, ooh, I don't even know what this is, but the grain is gorgeous and, oh, I love live oak, but I can't get much of it. And things just started to become very valuable, even though they were a lot smaller. Unfortunately, my shop space didn't grow by much. Soon, I started to develop this little box here. And this is down beside my box and it's full of really cool things like 500 year old English oak. Really cool piece of palm that I hate to work with, but I don't have much of it around here. A piece of walnut with a family story behind it. Nice zebra wood. Gorgeous curly white oak. Yeah, it's really thin, but I could use that as a veneer somewhere. Bog oak. African blackwood. Lots of things that, uh, yeah, I really like those pieces. They all have value to me, and I really can't get myself to throw out of it. But everything is kept down to this box. If this box overflows, then I go through it and I throw some things out that I really don't need. The next problem came the day I started turning things on a lathe, because at that point you got all these little pieces of really cool wood that uh, ooh, I could turn that into a, a turning project. <gasps> I could turn pins with this. And once you get into pin turning, then every scrap of wood is now valuable. Every scrap of wood has a use and uh, yeah, you're starting to overload your shop again. So that meant I needed to get another box of things that are turnable. And usually they're not really high quality or valuable things, like this piece of cherry. It's, it's just a piece of cherry, but it's got interesting grain running through it. It's not a very valuable piece, but it could be a really cool turned piece of wood. So I hold on to that. I have a box about this big that I keep in another room that's my turning supplies. And once that box gets full, then I have to cull it out or I have to turn some things. And usually for everything under 18 inches long, that works perfectly fine. But what happens when I get weird pieces that, yeah, it's over 18 inches long, but it's not valuable enough to stick in my valuables box and it's not really a turning supply. Where do I draw the line at that? This one then is the problem for most people and where a lot of people really run into the issue of what lumber do I keep? You're gonna hear all sorts of different ideas of what is valuable and what is not. Uh, some people will actually do it by weight. Some people do it by actual size. Is it more than two board feet, I keep it. If it's smaller than two board feet, I get rid of it. it by value, is this something that's worth $10? Then I keep it. If it's worth less than $10, I throw it out. Uh, there's a lot of different things that go back and forth. But at some point, you actually have to draw the line. And depending upon your shop, that line might be in very different places. So let me take you over to my lumber rack and show you what my thought process is. So welcome to my lumber rack. And yeah, I don't have a whole lot of space in my shop, but this is the wood I have to choose from. This is actually my stairwell to the basement. The stairs go down here. So my lumber rack is very short up top and really, really long down here at the bottom. Usually what I end up with is a lot of stuff up here on the top shelf. Now this shelf is only for 18 inches to 24 inches long. If it's longer than 24 inches, but shorter than four foot, then it goes in here. Four foot to six foot so is here, six to seven foot is here, eight foot and longer than eight foot, up to about 10 foot down at the bottom. And this top shelf tends to really get crowded and full. And this one, yeah, it's pretty full, but then 
uh, these start to thin out. Actually, right now, my, my four-foot shelf is the one that is the most full, which is kind of odd. That's not quite normal. I usually go until any one shelf starts to fill up. And then I look at the lumber in there and I ask myself, what in here can I get rid of? And I usually end up with odd sticks of pine. You know, it's really not that valuable. I can get rid of it. And so I clean out any, each individual shelf as it gets too full. If it gets too full, then I clean it out. Now, usually my shelves on the bottom are the ones that aren't very full because when I buy large lumber, um, I usually end up milling it down and using it. I don't save a lot of large lumber for general use. So for me, it ends up being a spatial thing. When a space gets full, I empty it out. When the space has more space, well, then I can put more lumber into it. Most of the time, that then means bonfire night. Uh, and a lot of the wood just gets burnt because I have a bonfire out back, we cook some hot dogs, and it's kind of fun to see how different woods burn at different rates. The pines, they're gone like that. But some of these really ultra-dense oaks can actually burn for a long time. And so it's kind of fun to play with that. Also, occasionally I'll invite people over and be like, yeah, save some wood from my burn pile. If there's something you like, something you'd want out of my burn pile, then take it before we burn it. And then afterwards, I'll all enjoy some s'mores and hot dogs. Usually if I'm building a piece of something that's larger than about that, I'm gonna end up going and buying the lumber I need for the project and whatever's left over gets into my stock. If it's smaller than that, I'm usually gonna be building it out of the st stock I have on hand. And the stock kind of rotates throughout. Some of the things I've had in there for a decade or more. And some things, well, I bought some lumber just last week. You never know how long it's gonna last. It just depends on the space I have. A lot of people really like to base their measurements on money or value. I like to base it on the space I have in the shop because I don't want my shop to be absolutely crowded with lumber and just having piles sitting all over the place. That tends to be eh, a little bit dangerous in my book and uh, it just clutters things up. It's worthless space that just doesn't save me the time. I'd rather spend some money occasionally to get the exact lumber I need rather than saving every scrap I have to eventually use it someday. So I limit myself by the space I have set aside for lumber. When lumber gets too much for that, then I call through it and I burn it. So now for the fun part. What method do you use to store your lumber and what method do you use for when do you save it, when do you get rid of it? I know quite a few people where when they run out of space, that means they need to build more space. Uh, and I've got a good friend whose entire basement is just absolutely packed with lumber because he'll never throw it out. There's always that chance of, ooh, I could use that. But then he'll still go to the store to buy exactly what he needs for a project. So yeah, you know who you are. <laughs> So let me know in the comments down below, what do you use? What is your metric for saving lumber, for getting rid of it? And if you're having problems with this, read down through the comments and see if there's a method that works for you. I'd love to read that. And if you do actually put a comment down below, you are helping the channel, so thank you. Also, you can hit like, share, subscribe. Those along with comments do help us. They get us in front of more people and help the algorithm here on YouTube. So thank you for that, that means a lot. If you wanna take one step farther, there's always the patrons on Patreon who are scrolling over here on the side. Thank you to all of you. Uh, you are the ones who quite literally keep the lights on and keep us going. It is patrons and members here on YouTube who've clicked that join button. You are the ones keeping us going. Without you, we wouldn't exist. We're supported by you, the viewers, and thank you. That means a lot. So I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So now the best metric, is it lighter than a duck? If so, burn it!